Hello fellow lovers of the liminal and the weird and welcome to another video by Liminal Spaces. Today I'm very excited because I've found another book that fits into my weird psychedelic new wave science fiction collection. And when I say I found it, that's not really the case. The truth is, this book was recommended to me by one of you viewers. And for that, I really have to say I appreciate it. Unfortunately, I tried going back through the comments. I don't remember what video this particular viewer recommended this book to me. So hopefully they're still watching. If you are, and you recommended Night of Delusions by Keith Laumer, please comment below so I can thank you properly because this book was really incredible. It was a great time. This book takes place in an unspecified time and actually hops uh, all throughout different timelines, uh, which is one of the things that makes it very interesting. Uh, it is one that you start reading and it seems that it's going to be one very specific thing. And I'll be honest, when I first started reading it, I wasn't very interested um, because it was doing this kind of detective gumshoe 1940s private dick thing that I, I just was not, I've never really been that into. Uh, but let me tell you, uh, that part is small. And the minute that they're done with that, that Lammer's done with that introduction, this thing hits the ground running and it will throw you all over the place. I was constantly turning pages and it's a short read, wondering what he was going to do next. And he never stopped letting me down. A quick plot synopsis. The novel follows a man, Florian, who is who was in the military and now is a private investigator and is hired to help a committee lay down if you're gonna lay down sorry where was i um it's about a man named florian and he is hired to help a committee that is worried about a, a specific senator that has gone insane and they want to try to use a new machine in order to bring back the sanity of this senator. I know I've got a lot of books set up here uh, and I will explain that near the end of the video, so keep on watching. And the way that they're going to bring back the senator's sanity is through a machine, a dream machine that will allow the senator to bring reality to all of his crazy delusions. And they're, they're hoping by allowing him to play out all these delusions, uh, eventually he will snap back to reality. So they have this dream machine uh, that Florian's going to use. And they've set up this entire kind of fake set of a city where he can run around and let his delusions play out. And Florian's job is to protect him. And right away, things start getting weird. Uh, and that's when the novel really picks up. Uh, and that's the part that, that I think most people will really enjoy of it is this constant shifting of realities. And this book jumps all over the place through time, through space. There's different planets. Uh, it is really, really an interesting read. And I think a, a good example of, of new wave science fiction. I'm surprised I hadn't heard of this before. So this book was published in 1972. And Keith Laumer had been writing for a bit at that point. Um, I think he started in the mid-50s. And the interesting thing about Laumer and the time that this book came out, I hope I'm saying his last name right. If I'm not, I apologize. Uh, he suffered a stroke. Let me make sure this is true. Yeah, he suffered a stroke and the doctors, he was unable to write through the first couple of years of the 70s. And the doctors didn't think he'd be able to do much beyond that at all. Uh, and Laumer wouldn't accept that. So he created his own regiment to get back to health. And he followed it. And it was really intense. 
And so apparently all the novels that were published in the early 70s were written earlier than that. Uh, and it's interesting because the main character in this book is very stubborn and i feel like that's a bit of laumer himself um saying no i'm gonna i'm gonna push through this my way and i'm going to to uh, do right by myself and i feel like the the main character in this novel does a lot of that too okay so without giving anything else away let's talk a little bit about some of the things in it um the prose is good it is direct there is nothing in here, prose-wise, that is confusing or written in such an artistic manner that will make you have to reread a certain section again and again to figure out what exactly is going on through it. Uh, are you just going to make noises throughout this whole video? And that, to me, is a strength, but also a little bit of a uh, of a failing for this novel because I really, I really do enjoy text that makes me have to kind of work to understand what is going on. And after coming off Shadow of the Torture, which the prose was so dense and so beautiful in that one, I had to read it so slow. I breezed through this really quickly, and some would say that's better. That that's a better way to do it. I can see. Both. Uh, this one is is one that, that, that would read very quickly. Uh, so there's nothing really to write home about with the prose on this one, uh, but it, it really serves its story very, very well. The characters, at first I was really unhappy with the characters, and really, truly, there's only one character that's important in this, and that is Florian himself. Uh, and and I'm not going to give away the, the reason that that is, but Florian is really the only character whose development uh, is important in this story. So as I said, this novel was published in 1972, and I was reading it and thinking to myself, 1972, uh, why are these people talking like they're in the 40s? Why is he... Uh, writing a 40s novel in 1972, and it really turned me off right at the beginning. Uh, and the character was such a caricature of that 40s detective, private detective, uh, that I just, it just seemed derivative and awful at first. Um, but uh, as I read on, his character developed more and more and more, and that went away. And uh, I'm happy to report that there's an absolutely good reason that the novel starts that way. A very specific reason, and a very specific reason that it is so derivative of those stories from the 40s. I'm not going to give it away here, uh, but uh, I will talk about it in my deep reading of the novel. Uh, so yeah, it was very, uh, it was, the character developed really well. Most important is, of course, the science and the awe of this story, and I think that that was really incredible throughout this entire story. I think he did a wonderful job. I love shifting realities a ton in my stories, and this one really did that in spades. Which brings me to, why do I have these other novels here? And this is the most exciting concept of this novel that uh, that I'm very glad that uh, that this was recommended to me because it fits in a line of concepts of people being inside their own subconsciouses or other subconsciouses and shaping or changing or editing those realities. And this is such a unique and fun concept that it uh, it excites me that there's there's that I found three such specific examples of it. And if I were to run a book club, uh, I would do a step-by-step -step reading of these three books for that exact purpose. I've done deep deep reads of these two on the channel, 
Uh, and I'm going to add this one this week. But it would be super fun to start with Zelazny's Dream Master, move on to Laumer's Night of Delusion, and then end up with Haruki Murakami's uh, Hard Boiled Wonderland and the End of the World. And you can watch the videos in that order. Also, as a side note, this doesn't fit in perfectly, but it still does have a dream machine. Uh, this one has a slightly different plot. Uh, but it, it really fits in there very well, and that's The Lathe of Heaven by Ursula K. Le Guin. All four of these share a similarity that uh, is really enjoyable, and I've done all three of these on the channel, and I'm doing that this week. So, uh, yeah, this, these are, are four books that are just absolutely incredible. Uh, I do recommend this. You should absolutely read this. In my opinion, this is the weakest of this group, but that does that does not drop my recommendation uh, at all. This is a super quick, super fun read that anybody that loves weird, liminal, um, new wave science fiction will get into. Uh, absolutely, absolutely worth a read. And it ends up in crazy places. I'm not going to spoil it anymore. Uh, you should absolutely, absolutely go pick it up and read it. And of course, in a few days, I'll have a deep, uh, deep read video of this book up. So there we go. A new, strange, shifting reality book to add to our uh, weird sci-fi collection. All right. And of course, I'd recommend it. I'm not going to rate it. I'll rate them all at the end of the year. Um, uh, thank you very much for watching this to the end. If you liked it, please click like. If you like this kind of content, please click subscribe because we'll be doing a lot more of it in the future. And thank you so much for watching.